G'day guys. Today we're going to be pulling wire. As you can see, I've got my timeless fence system set up here. The length is probably 400 meters, which works out roughly to be about that 12, 1300 foot. So it's not a long run, but it's going through three gullies and the gullies are rather steep. So what I want to do today is firstly run the wire and while I'm doing it, I want to show you how the positioning of these T-posts and how paramount it is to have them in the position which I've got them, especially when you're going through gullies. And also I want to talk about the H-posts and what I've done and why you need to do it this way, especially on hills, crests, low points, and gullies. I'll give you a quick overview. So obviously we're starting there at that New Zealand A-frame brace and it goes all the way down. One gully starting there. Should be able to see the fence line. Second gully, third gully and right over to where the Kubota is is where it finishes on another New Zealand A-frame brace and we're making them into a spring gate. I like to use gripples. So that's a medium sized gripple. What I like about the gripple is you can just slide that on. Slide it on where you want it. So it locks in there. And all I do then is I just use my set of fence and pliers. And just pull that back and just keep sliding your gripple down. I've normally got Nick to give me a hand here because what I'll do is I'll put my foot there. Hold that gripple, and once you pull that back, that gripple's staying in place there. Pull the tension on it, you only need it hand tight. So that's all it is. So that's hand tight all the way along. And I do the same at the other end because I know it'll be slack because it goes through that gully. So it'll be slack the other end. I do that on both ends. You may be asking why have I got such a long piece here? That'd be a foot and a half. The reason being is I'm putting a spring gate here. And one thing good about the gripple is you notice it's got two holes, it's a joiner. You can have a two bits of wire going through and the gripple in the middle and you can tension the two wires as a joiner. Instead of using a joiner, I'll go across to the other side for a bit of fence I've already finished and I'll show you what I've done over there to, have, to be able to incorporate my spring gate. So as you can see, this is one we done two days ago, this fence, it runs back to a corner, a New Zealand a corner on the front of our property. So this is where, how I like to terminate my ends for a spring gate. So that bit of loose wire, it just comes back through and if Nick comes closer, it goes, it goes back through the other hole in the gripple and I just twirl the excess along the back. So now what that enables me to do is put my spring gate here and the other handle goes in the other loop at the other end. So that's, that, that's one thing I like about the gripples on the termination point. Another reason why I like gripples is I don't need to have inline strainers. Where I can help it, this is a 400 meter or 1300 foot length through the gullies. On my fence line at the front, they're probably similar. And I haven't got any inline strainers. So all you need to do is, like I just said then, is strain that wire why I've got the excess is you put it through that loop like I said and you put the excess around, you twirl it around there. When it comes, because I know for a fact that my two fences at the front over 
a period of six months, I had got a bit of sag in the wire, so I had to retension it. All you do then is you just get your key, which comes with the gripple, you push it in the little hole above the wire, you gotta take the strain. So you pull the strain off the wire, and that allows the key to go in, and then you can pull the wire out. These two down here, they look a bit curly and bent because they were looped in there, and they had, they had sagged. So I actually unpulled them, and that allows you now to put my fencing pliers on there and retention them. I've also got a gripple tool. So if you didn't want to use fencing pliers to tighten them, you can put your gripple on there. You can put that back in there and use your tensioning wire to retension the wire if it sags. And then you can push your loop, your wire back through and recreate the loop for your spring gate. The reason I don't use the gripple tension is because you don't need to have that piano tight. Remember. It's not a physical barrier, it's a psychological barrier. So you've only just got to take, time just recommend just taking the sag out of your line, because once they touch that a few times, they're going to get shocked three or four times and they will not go near it. So it doesn't need to be piano tight, you're not stopping animals from running through it. And there's enough movement in this line that if a kangaroo does hit it, the fence, the fence is going to bend over and come back up. If that was piano tight, that wouldn't happen. You just want it hand tight, in the post do their work and flex and that's why I only want to hand pull it and not over, over tension it Hard at work at doing nothing. I'll start by talking about positioning of these H-posts first or Australian posts, but sometimes call them a H-post. If you notice, this is on a crest of a hill. It drops down into a gully there and then crests up into this at the top of the hill and you'll notice it slopes down into that other gully. If I was to put just a normal T-post here, when I'm draining this wire, this T-post, as you can see, this wire is facing down. As you strain it, the wire is wanting to push that T-post down. That's why you need a H post at the, at the top of a hill like this. So this is 30 inches into the ground and it's also got an 80 pound bag or 35 kilos worth of concrete halfway filling that 30 inch hole. And then you ran the best in back in with dirt. This post when I set it was leaning out on three quarters of a bubble. But I'll get some the coal to come round in a minute you'll notice that's sitting square now. So that's vital to have that three quarters of bubble out because when you're coming around the corner, it's gonna to wanna to pull the H post in. So as you can see the side of this H post, it's sitting pretty square now. Like I said, there was three quarters of bubble out. I think it was about 50 mil or two inches in total. So those strain are those five wires, just hand tight, remember, not piano tight, has now straightened that H post up. Had you've started that with a straight position, it would be leaning in 
50 mil. And this one here, this drops down into the gully where Nicole's standing in and it goes up the other side the same amount. So this is where you want to position your H-post on the top of that crest just before it flattens out because it's the same thing as that crest over there except this is in a gully. You want them both side on the crest of the hill as it's coming out of the gully. Because same thing again, as you're straining, that's one to push down. If this was a normal T-post, that would be pushing down into the soil. And if you had a lot of rain and the soil's pugged and this is still under tension, there's a chance of that H-post pushing down on the ground. But remember, like I said, these have got 80 pounds of concrete, 35 kilos, bailed out into an eight inch hole. So that acts as a plug, a stopper. So if you do get a lot of rain and this ground gets very wet, that concrete plug, they've got to push that whole concrete, <coughs> excuse me, eight inches into the ground. Unlike a T-post, which is about an inch and a half across, it's just like a spear. It'll just drive straight into the ground. With this and as you can see, this is pretty steep. So that's coming down the angle and it flattens out the bottom of the gully. And this is where you need your other H post, strainer post in the bottom of the gully. So where that gully comes in on the on this corner, position one there in this black section. And just as it starts to come up the rise, that's where your other H post goes. Same again, bury them 30 inches into the ground and 80 pounds of concrete in Australia, 35 kilos or half fill the hole. Like I said, I use an eight inch auger and it's half fill and that's roughly around that 30 kilo mark. If the auger's bigger, obviously you've got to use more concrete because time just recommend 80 pound or 50% of the hole filled. And why you want to do it down here, if you had a T-post like I mentioned here, definitely when you're straining, because this is a floodway and this gets full of water, it runs through here, that'll be boggy. Under this tension of this wire, a T-post like a star picket would just pull straight out of the ground like i showed you in the previous video it just pulls straight out of the ground with this eight inch plug and 80 pounds of concrete into the ground ran with soil it's got to pull the whole plug out of the ground and it won't and that's why you need a h post in the top and the bottom of your gullies so people often ask me are they easy to take out of the ground can you pull them out of the ground if you make a mistake well, I'm going to give you the answer now. Obviously, when I strained, when I put these T-posts in about three days ago, I had my string line on the wrong side of these H-posts because this is the first one I put in. Hence why it's sitting there by itself with no wire through it. I realised I was straining the rest of the line was on the back of the H-post, so I had to put the line up and redo it. And I tried for hours, no matter what I did, to wiggle that out. And I also tried, I tried pulling it out multiple times and it will not come out so no these aren't going to pull out of the ground easily but if you've got a star picket remover you just use that you're not going to hurt the pvc post so on this one i'm, I'm just going to use a kangaroo jack like if you're changing a car i'm going to bring the kangaroo jack down with a chain on it i'm just going to jack it out the ground there's no way you're ever going to pull them out by hand remember these ones i won't take too long on this because this is a quite a steep hill it's about a 45 degree angle and Nic nicole's struggling to keep her step She's holding that camber there. So, and as you can see, that is quite an angle compared to, you should be able to see that H post down there. That's 90 degrees. And that's at about a 45 degrees. I've seen people put steel posts in vertical and people question me, why is it on such of an angle? Shouldn't you go vertical with the hill? And conditions like this, there's no way in the world. I've got, remember I've gone through three gullies today. I could not be straining this fence if they were vertical sitting straight up and down here. Because what happens is, it's going to be hard to explain. I haven't got a free post on me, but when it's vertical like this, that post would go straight up and down. That wire, I know it's going to be hard, hard to uh, picture this, but that wire catches if it was vertical. It catches on this inside corner and the top corner on the other side. And there's no way you can pull that through. So 400 meters or 1300 feet of wire, and I've got probably 15 T posts in the gully I would come to a standstill if I was to do that for all of them. The moment you put it at the 90 degrees to the contour of the land, what it does then is exactly like it's done here. It changes it from that position where you've got all that friction and opens it to 90 degrees. So the post is running 90 degrees to the ground and the wire is running 90 degrees to the ground and that opens that hole up. 
That's why I can pull 1,300 feet of plain wire over the distance through three deep gullies is because I position these posts. But not only is it important for straining wire, when you get animal impact like kangaroos and that, if you've got all these friction points in your line and you've got an animal or a beast hitting that or a kangaroo, that line is not free. Now you've got a place where it's catching and there's a chance your high tensile wire is going to snap. With this now, I'll just demonstrate, if something hits that, that's moving through, that's moving through those holes. It's moving with the holes. If that was tight, there's no way. That's 1,300 meet, 1,300 feet, and I can stretch that through those holes. If that was tight, you wouldn't be doing that. That'd be catching and either breaking your high tensile wire. That is free moving, this post, look. That's free moving, it's not catching anywhere. And that's what you want. You want electric fence that moves freely if you have animal, imp animal impact. Yep. To make these loops on the end with these gripples for the spring gate, it's pretty easy. Leave yourself a foot and a half of wire. I've got a lot more because I strain from this end, I'll sort that out later. And all you need to do is poke it through this second hole here and just feed it through all the way through to the length you want it. So you start getting tight soon, so all you need to do then is grab your set of pliers and grab this loose bit of wire and pull it through to what you want. I want about two inches in my loop. So that's probably it there. That's perfect. And all you do then is just wrap that wire around. Obviously I'm gonna make that a foot and just tidy that up. You only need it to about there. Now, the thing is what I like about it, to keep the conductivity in this line without having strainers in your line, all you need to do now, if you ever need to retension it, is just grab your key, your gripple key, when I find it in my pocket, and you put that in the hole above the wire. So the one we just pushed in. But the secret is here, you put it in there, the secret is you've got to take the tension off that wire first. So that wire you've put through, what you need to do is pull it through a little bit more, take the tension off the wheel. There's a wheel inside that gripple. So as you pull that tension off that wheel, like so, that key locks in, you hear that lock in, and then that wire holding that key in, don't let it come out, that wire just feeds all the way back out the hole again. So all you need to do is pull that back out. For this demonstration, not gonna pull all the way back out, but you pull all the way out of that wire, and then you can grab your set of fencing wires again and just pull and just tighten that gripple. And then all you do then is feed that wire back through into that loop to make your loop again. There will come a point in time where these gripples may seize. Then what I'm gonna use then is an inline tensioner. I like using the wheel tensioners because what you do is you slip the wheel on, I haven't got one with me, you just slip the wheel on over here, you just use a ratchet and it spins the wire and then just put the pin back in. And you can tension this wire up over and over again. You're gonna get years of tensioning once they seize out of a wheel tensioner. That's it, we got this section of fence finished today, my six strand high tensile timeless fence, over 1300 foot. It's been a big day, like I said, it's gone through three gullies. We got up at four o'clock this morning, just so we can be out here for 4.30, just as the sun rising to get this done. So it's been a massive day for myself and Nicole. It's like 34 degree heat today over here in Queensland. I'm not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but it is very hot. And this is still in the middle of September. So it's still spring. Summer hasn't even come, so and as you can see, the ground's pretty dry. It's going to be pretty bad drought, they reckon. So we'll get home. We need to rest. We're buggered. And as you can see for these puppies, they've had a big day too. They haven't done anything but watch us today. But they're obviously been sleeping, and they're asleep now. It's cooling off there in the shade. I think we better pick them up, throw them on the ute, and we'll take them home. Have a good morning. Have a great afternoon and a terrific evening, guys, wherever you're watching us from, and we'll catch you later.